the bag of features for image description is a method that works with a base descriptor that can be any descriptor that we want uh, and then learns the descriptor by using the data that we have available. This method was uh, the state of the art before the deep learning era and it's uh, very interesting to, uh, to be studied. It has the following general steps. So first we are going to extract features locally. Then we are going to quantize or cluster those features. And in, in this space that was clustered or quantized, we are going to learn a vocabulary of visual words that we call the dictionary. Then the descriptors will be the frequency of every visual word in a given image. This uh, means we are going to obtain a histogram of visual words. This technique was inspired on textons for texture, texture analysis and the bag of, of words method for text analysis. So let us take this, those three examples of images. In this case, we are um, understanding or uh, trying to illustrate the method using texture. Say that this image will be well represented by using three patches. So by just having three patches, we can well represent this texture here. In the, this case, on, in the middle, we have those three patches and in the right hand side, other three patches. So the idea is using those um, small blocks or small sub images in order to describe the behavior or the, the texture in general. But note that we are using the actual images to learn this. So for that, we require a training set. That means a uh, set of images that can be used to extract this information and then learn the appropriate, what we call visual words. So in order to describe each sub image, we can use the actual pix pixel space or we can extract features or descriptors from those sub-images. And then for each sub-image extracted from a given image, we check its similarity with the dictionary, counting the occurrence of the most similar visual word. So let's say we have a dictionary of, in this case, textons that are describing texture. No, uh, note that we have a dictionary um, with 12 different uh, patches of uh, texture that, that are called textons. And then in this image here, when we extract individual patches and compare with this dictionary of textons, textons what we observe is that we have a frequency that is larger for those three first um, textons than the remaining ones. For this image here, we are probably going to observe a larger frequency of textons that appear more similar to those five ones than to the remaining ones. And finally, for this last image, similarly. So how can we apply that in general, not only for texture? Well, the steps are first, define the base features. It can be uh, any feature that we want. Then extract features locally from patches, that is sub-images. In this case, uh, I'm using three um, examples of an, an image of a face, a bike, and a violin. So the feature space is going to be formed by multiple local feature vectors. Instead of having a single vector representing the whole image, I'm going to have lots of vectors representing each image because the, those images were extracting, extracted from patches. In here, the uh, red dots represent face, the blue ones represent bike, and the green ones, the violin. From this space that I'm just, I just uh, used a plan to uh, a plane to show in 2D, but it could be um, a space with a larger dimensionality. We are going to learn a dictionary with k visual words. We could, for example, quantize this space by finding uh, regions and cutting them into regions 
so let's say a fixed grid here but we could instead run a clustering algorithm and here I illustrate using a clustering algorithm with k equal to 4 so by defining k equal to 4 I'm defining that my dictionary is composed of four visual words and those visual words uh, is going are going to be the centroids of each cluster I'm saying that those four words or visual words will well represent the the entire space of images and this is why we need a training set of images to learn from from those so in this case this patch of violin this patch of bike and those two patches of face are uh, are going to be used as basis for any future inference the resulting descriptor is a histogram obtained by setting a bin for each dictionary word so in this case the four words that we define it extract the next patch from an image that we want to analyze and count one more to the code word in the dictionary that is more similar to the features from the new patch in the case of a quantized space we have to find the similarity but in case of uh, clustering we can just use the clustering model to infer what is the uh, most similar patch and then by counting the frequency we can build a descriptor that can well represent the entire image let us go into detail and implement that using uh, lots of packages here. I'm going to use scikit-learn, scikit-image, and also other um, other packages. You can look into detail in the notebook. I'm going to use extract patches 2D from um, the scikit-learn Psych feature extraction, and then we have to define here the size of the patch and the number of patches per image the path to search for images the training images in this case and then note that each image each patch has an extra dimension due to the color channel so it would be 1 for gray level and 3 for RGB so we'd have to take care and compensate for that so those are the parameters we are going to use 15 by 15 as the size of the patch 250 patches for each image uh, and I'm going to define a random state here just to make it to, to be able to repeat this without change so in parallel I'm going to extract patches from images this is going to make it faster and then I'm going to just print that we have 80 images in total in this uh, path here and the size of each array of patches is uh, 250 because we uh, ask for the method to extract 250 but the size of each patch is actually 675 this is because we have 15 by 15 by 3 next we obtain features from each one of the patches this is just uh, one example of image patch we could change here for example getting another image a random image here and see that it gets different patches so th those are just um, a few patches extracted from an image we are going to use the LBP as the base descriptor but we can uh, instead use any the descriptor that you want the color descriptor shape descriptor and so on then we have to convert the patch array because in the previous uh, example we have a um, the array was organized in images and now I want that to be organized in patches because I want to obtain features for each patch so after uh, everything runs we have two um, so, sorry um, uh, 20,000 images or uh, that, that is 20,000 instances 
that are represented by each patch that was extracted from the 80 um, images. And the size of each instance is 10 because we use it a, um, the LDP to be to have eight samples, but we could instead, for example, use any other number. Um, sorry, I just missed something. Yeah, yeah, because now it doesn't match the actual the actual value. So let me change here, change back. Uh, what did I do wrong? So um, let me just r run it again. Oh, okay, so the I first have the radius and then the sampling pixels. Okay, that's correct. Yeah, and then this is fine. And then we are going to learn the dictionary as the third step. We are going to use the clustering algorithm k-means, defining the number of visual words to be 50 but we can use uh, other sizes if you wish. Uh, in the literature, we can find the, the size of the dictionary ranging from 25 to even 1000 or even more. In here, I'm just uh, learning and defining and learning the model. Just for visualization, I'm going to show the two first components of LVP and its labels. And in here we can see that if we increase or decrease the size of the dictionary, we can visualize in different ways. So we can see here that those uh, are organized uh, spatially. Let us go back to 50. And then we can finally obtain histograms from the bag of features. Since we have n images with n patches, we can check the frequency of each visual word in each training image by uh, looking into those n patches in each image and computing the histogram appending into an array of features. Now we do have 80 arrays that uh, represent each image and 50 features. 50 is related to the size of the dictionary. And now I'm, I, I can use EMG fits as the set of features, training features for each image. And finally, we can use those features for recognition. Let us use those for content-based image retrieval. I'm going to define a query image. And then from that, I'm going to do all the steps that uh, we did uh, above for training images, so get the patches, reshape the array, get LBP features for each patch using the same um, parameters, then uh, learn or uh, with the using the k-means model that we learned before, we predict what would be the visual words for each patch and then compute the descriptor. Finally, I'm going to compute distances between every uh, uh, between the, the query features and every image in the training set, and then check for the nearest images. So this was the query image, which was uh, an image from a flower, and you can see that it returned four images, four images of flowers um, in this uh, scenario. So showing that this method can uh, well suit some, some scenarios. And in this case, those features were learned using the actual images that we have available. So we can change also here the, uh, the name of the, for example, using another image for query and see that we have, in this case, a lower performance. So for a football uh, image, just two were retrieved. Then we can continue changing here to see how it behaves. So for this party one, uh, that is not that good. So that indicates also that we want to define or well define the um, not only the base descriptor, but the size of the dictionary 
and the size of the patch, number of the patches, everything is going to count when it comes to improving the performance of this method. So although it's not a perfect method, it can uh, be really useful because it has, uh, you can choose from, from many different descriptors and many different parameters, which, uh, is, which has two, um, two sides. So uh, on the one hand, it is very flexible. On the other hand, this number of parameters and choices can hamper or make it difficult to analyze a, a data set. In any case, it, uh, it was a method that was used, um, widely used in the literature, especially um, in the 2000s and the beginning of the 2010 decade.